one of the great battles in modern science, embryonic stem cell research has been fought in California. UCSF has been at the forefront of this battle, having made important advances throughout the last 30 years, including the co-discovery of the first embryonic stem cell and the coining of the phrase. UCSF scientists see stem cells as the beginning of a revolution in human biology that could yield treatments for devastating diseases and injuries. Despite the promise, again and again, attempts have been made at the national level to stifle the work. A federal policy forbid funding for the research and forbid the work from being conducted in federally funded labs. And virtually all university labs are federally funded. Determined to persevere despite these challenges, UCSF scientists moved their research off campus only to find that most landlords didn't want to be involved. Finally, in a former dental lab, they created an important line of embryonic stem cells until a fateful stormy night when a power failure destroyed two years of work. Undeterred, UCSF used its ingenuity and turned to private philanthropy and school funds to create a firewalled lab within a UCSF building. And spurring them on in 2004, state taxpayers voted to pass a $3 billion bond initiative to support stem cell science, creating the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. One of the first initiatives of the new institute was to offer competitive grants to partially fund new buildings. Across California, university stem cell researchers would have a place to work. With generous donor gifts and a hard-earned grant from the State Stem Cell Institute in 2008, UCSF broke ground on its new stem cell research building. UCSF began to draw leading scientists from across the world to its labs. In 2006, a Japanese scientist, now affiliated with UCSF, discovered that adult skin cells could be changed to an embryonic-like state, giving hope that one day the research would not be so controversial. And for a while, a change in administration in Washington relaxed federal rules. But embryonic stem cell opponents struck again. In August 2010, they brought suit against the National Institutes of Health, and a federal judge halted all federally funded embryonic stem cell research. By late September, the appellate courts overruled the decision and scientists were free again to do their research. In February 2011, UCSF celebrated the opening of the new building and in it, scientists are exploring the earliest days of human development and researching the cause of breast cancer and prostate cancer and brain tumors. They're preparing to test the safety of experimental drugs on human cells derived from stem cells in the lab. They're learning how to use stem cells to restore tissues damaged in diabetes and heart disease or spinal cord injury. And all of this is happening here at UCSF. <laughs>